Hi everyone, it's Catherine here from the Tudor Tracker. I am here today to do a book review. I haven't done one for a while. So um, I've kind of in the past I've done a lot of them have been books that I haven't read for a while. So I'm reading a few more at the minute. So I'm kind of going to alternate and do a mixture of the two. So today's book is The Man Behind the Tudors, Thomas Howard's second Duke of Norfolk. Um, by Kirsten Claydon Yardley, and this is published by um, Pen and Sword History. So, I've been looking into the Howards a bit more recently for various reasons, and this was one of the first books that I looked at. Um, first of all, is as I've said so many times in all my things, why is everyone called Thomas? They're all called Thomas, and it gets really quite confusing sometimes. Um, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to, well, no, that's not right. I had a, a, an idea of what I was going to find out about this chap here. And it did and it didn't live up to that. So I think a lot of the time when people think about the Howards in the Tudors, they think of his son, the third Duke of Norfolk, also called Thomas, obviously. And he is not generally portrayed as a particularly nice chap with a winning personality and I have just read a biography of him as well so I'll talk about that another time but this talks about obviously his father initially and how his father got back or was given the hereditary title of the, Duke, the title of the Duke of Norfolk because it had been held previously and then there was a gap between the um, people holding the dukedom and it really was quite a powerful position that it got him put into at the time now, his father, well, and, and then him as, as it came around to the time, was actually a supporter of Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth. They were Yorkists. His father ended up losing his life as a result of his involvement at the battle. And it was very much therefore left to Thomas to try and one, survive, <laughs> and two, build up the family name and fortune. And he really, really did do that. So you, you would think, bearing in mind the circumstances, it would be very difficult for him to even come out of prison, keep his life, and be able to live a relatively, when I say normal, you know, normal for <laughs> the time and his situation. But he really did help the Howards rise again. And as, as many of the men in his family, he was a superb military commander which is probably a large part of what enabled him to bring his family and himself back into prevalence again. Now, I mentioned just now about how people tend to view the, his, his son, the third Duke, um, who really benefited almost entirely from his father's um, hard work, you know, through military um, work, through... Um, arranging profitable marriages, beneficial marriages for his family, even further out relatives as well, gaining lands, gaining money, um, rewards, um, posts, all these types of things. He really set the Howard dynasty up from almost below nothing, really. And actually, I really felt that I wouldn't warm him at all. I think to say I warmed him is a little bit too affectionate but I thought I would dislike him a little bit and actually of all of them he's probably the most likable and, and people talk about a lot of the things he did and we kind of use the excuse of well it was the age he was in a lot of the things that they did and that's definitely true but compared to some of his contemporaries and certainly the next generation which included um, his, his son the third duke he relatively kept his head down, did all the things that he needed to do and wasn't overall quite as damaging and obnoxious and um, vengeful and willful. And yes, he was greedy for the things that he wanted to do in, in terms of money and power, etc., etc., etc. But not in the same sort of spiteful and grasping way as a lot of other people come across. Or at least that, that's how I... I felt when I read this, which has led me to wonder quite a few things about him and how he's perceived now and how I think a lot of the perception of him is based on subsequent generations and um, 
other people around the time a lot of these things were happening so i don't want to sort of elaborate on that too much at the minute because i will another time but i really enjoyed this book if you in, if especially if you enjoy learning about military campaigns and those types of things there's definitely something in this for you because as we said you know he, he was a real military man very very successful with that as well and that certainly came from his genes and passed on in his genes as well so there's a lot of that information in there but if that's not your cup of tea don't worry because it's not like oh just lots of explanations of military commands and obviously that's woven very much into how he became the man that he was and the impact that had it's integral you can't sort of ignore that at all so i would say and there's not a huge amount as much as you would think out there about these howards so i think this is a very good time it's brilliant that somebody has written this book and it is out it's a beautiful book as well um and yeah i would recommend that so if you have read it then please let me know what you think underneath and um if you would like to and you go and buy it then let me know as well and let me know what you think then too so thank you very much for listening to this um, I do hope you enjoy the book. It is available on Amazon, I think probably through Pen and Sword as well. And I'm sure lots of other places too, all the usual things, you'll find it. So thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the book and take care. Bye-bye.